creating a jihadi threat with near global reach. Those are the views of the new head of GCHQ. He warns that the challenge from the group calling itself Islamic State is huge. Writing in the Financial Times, Robert Hannigan says ISIS is using the web to promote itself, intimidate people and radicalise new recruits. But he says some technology companies are in denial about this and what's required is a new deal between governments and those technology companies. Mr Hannigan says terrorists have long used the web, but ISIS is far more sophisticated, posting footage which deliberately echoes violent online video games. Its expertise means that during its advance on Mosul, ISIS was able to send 40,000 tweets per day by evading spam filters. We're really one step away from members of ISIS sending tweets to all of us, telling us that we're going to be next. This is a new kind of way of spreading terror. It's a new kind of way of spreading propaganda, which we do have to counter. And, and as of yet, we can see that people are really operating under the ISIS banner with fair amounts of impunity. The GCHQ boss says social media sites have become the command and control networks of choice for terrorists and criminals. He says it should be easier for the security services to investigate their users and he's calling for a renewed debate about how to balance security, privacy and freedom of speech. Sure, the surveillance legislation in this country is outdated and that needs to be updated, but we need to know, well, what powers are lacking? What, what, ac what access to information do you need from the likes of Facebook and Twitter that you don't already have? And he hasn't covered that in this article. When Edward Snowden revealed the extent of the spy agency's ability to monitor our online communications, it forced them on the defensive. But now GCHQ is fighting back, suggesting that if we want more security,